Hi, everybody, and welcome to DevNet Create. My name is Hank Preston. I'm a principal engineer with learning and certifications. And today's talk is all about building a troubleshooting assistant by combining some old and new automation skills to make our jobs easier. There I am. I'm Hank Preston. I'm a principal engineer with learning and uh, learning at Cisco. And I love combining my network automation skills with my network engineering skills to make things just simpler, easier, and a bit more fun every day we go through. Now in today's talk, I love a story. So our use case here is following our new network automation engineer, Alana, who's been working for Carl, the network engineer, and she had she is being assigned one of the worst jobs a new network engineer can ever have. You see, inside of their organization, they've got a particular interface that's been causing them some trouble. It's flapping unexpectedly. They don't know why, they don't know what's causing it, but they know that they need to gather information when it happens. And so Carl is asking Alana to simply sit there all day long and watch the interface and then gather a set of show command output when it happens so they can try to troubleshoot it. Oh my God, there has got to be a way that we can automate this particular problem. Now, if we look at the problem specifically, what is it that we're being asked to do? We're asked to watch the operational state changes for a specific interface on an Ethernet or an Ethernet interface on a Nexus 9000 switch. Whenever the interface goes up or down, she needs to log the date and time of the change, gather outputs from a series of commands that she's been given, and then store the output from each of those commands for every event that happens. Now, how would this normally be done in a manual approach? Well, she'd probably open up a text file with, and then list out all the commands that need to be run, log into her switch, and then turn on some sort of terminal client so that it can log and output everything that happens on the screen so that as she runs these commands, she can then process them later. Maybe she'll monitor the console for state changes. Maybe she'll just run show interface over and over and over again, waiting for these changes to happen. And then when it does occur, paste all of those commands she's been asked to run into the terminal to compile that data that she'll later kind of carve up for each event as it goes through. I don't know about you, I've done this a few times and it's a terrible way to uh, spend your day and it's really error prone from a manual approach. So how can an automation engineer tackle this problem? Well, we'll use our programmability skills to monitor to the state, capture the command output, and save it off to a file. Basically, the same thing we need to do manually, but we're going to automate those steps so that we don't have to rely on human, uh, human capabilities. Now, whenever building an automation use case, it's important to have a lab to do the testing. If you don't have your own lab, by all means, use the DevNet Sandbox because that's one of the reasons it's there. And this will give us a solution that can be used over and over and over again. When, now, whenever you tackle a new use case, there you have to ask yourself some questions so that you're ready to kind of build and develop it. So how are we going to know an interface state has changed? Where are we going to run this Python script that we're going to build? How are we going to gather all of the command output? Like what tool are we going to use specifically? Where will we save the output? And how are we going to know in real time or as close to real time as possible that a state change has happened? Now, for these questions for our example, we'll go ahead and we'll monitor the device log for changes. The syslog notices every time an interface changes. We'll run this script directly on the device itself, remove any kind of latency or connection issues trying to keep connected to that device. We'll use the included Cisco CLI library that runs, that comes with the Nexus switches themselves to run these commands. And we'll uh, create one file per event, per command, directly on the device's boot flash. And this is where Embedded Event Manager comes in to allow us that real state, uh, uh, real-time state change notifications. With the questions answered, now we can begin to plan and prepare our use case. Now there's a lot of moving pieces involved here. So we put them together in this general order. At the start of every event will be the interface state changing itself, which will generate a syslog message on our device. Our EEM applet, the embedded event manager applet, will be triggered by that syslog message, which can then run the Python script to run all of our commands, gather the output from those commands, create the folder, create the files, and then have all of that stored and continually monitor every time an interface changes. 
Now, a couple of considerations when you're building an on-box Python script. We have to know what version of Python can we use. Starting with NXOS 9.35 and higher, Python 3 was included. But before that, earlier versions of NXOS had Python 2.7 on it. And so in a case like this, building a script that can support either one of these Python platforms is a good idea. Now the Python CLI library that we're going to use to gather these commands is only available when running on the switch, which means I can't write a script and then run it on my Mac laptop as an example. But the interactive Python shell directly on box gives us an ability to kind of run those commands, understand how that they'll work. So it's kind of this bridge development environment. Speaking of the bridge development environment, so we're gonna be developing and writing the code like on your laptop, maybe using VS Code, but we need to execute it on the switch. So how do we get the code to the switch? There's two broad ways we could tackle this. We could clone our code repository directly onto the switch using Git, or we could copy the scripts up to the switches as part of a deployment step in a kind of a code delivery pipeline fashion. Now the Git solution is nice. It kind of extends our Git workflow everywhere, but then I have to worry about how do I get Git communicating correctly on a switch all the way off through a management interface. And so we'll opt for the second option here to copy the scripts up. We'll do that by using a simple SCP copy command, which allows us to copy securely over the SSH protocol. So every time we update our script, we'll SCP it to the switch and then we'll have it available for running. With all that out of the way, now we can get directly into building our on-box Python script. Now, whenever I sit down to write a new use case or a new script, I always start with a script plan. It's not a lot of code to start out with. It just gives me the framework and kind of lets me know what I have to do each step along the way. Adding a doc string at the beginning, doing that upfront kind of reminds you what exactly are you after. And then I generally use comments directly in the code as kind of an outline. And so I've got four main steps. Collect the interface ID as a command line argument, run the commands and store the output, create a new folder for the output, and then create a file for each one of the commands. And now our process is simply to tackle each one of those bullet points one at a time. So first up, which interface should we check? Now we could hard code this directly into the script because we know which interface we're interested in because Carl told us. But let's make our code a bit more reusable and use an arg parse capability to pass that in as a command line argument. And so now this script could be used for any interface, not just the one that we're after right now. Our next step is to build the logic for how we'll actually run these commands in. I'm not actually running the commands yet. I'm just trying to frame up how am I going to do that in my code? So I create a function called a run command. This is where we'll capture both the output or the raw output from the command, as well as the JSON version of it for the commands that support that. And then we're gonna have two dictionaries that we're processing. I've got a first dictionary, which will have all of the commands that we need to run. And then a second dictionary will be populated with the output from each one of those commands. With that done, now we can start to actually run the commands themselves using that CLI library. Specifically, the CLI and the CLID methods that come in the library from Cisco. The CLI method will give us the raw output from every command that's run, while the CLID output will provide JSON-based formatted data that can be um, stored and is available for many of the commands, um, the show commands directly on the NXOS switches. Now, at this point in our development, because we're using those CLI libraries, we can no longer run this script off box and it has to be run on the Nexus switch. Finally, we'll go ahead and add in all of the commands that we want to run as part of our troubleshooting steps. With the commands done, now we can start to prepare the output reports. First, I need a folder name. I'm using the date time module from Python to determine what is the current time every time this script runs and then format that time out into a folder name capability. So year, month, date, hour, minute, second. So we know exactly when this particular event happened. Now Python includes the OS library for manipulating the underlying operating system where the script is running. And that works on a switch just like it would work on my Mac or my Windows or my Linux system 
so I can use the make dir function to create a new folder based on that folder name. Now the logic for writing the results files themselves is a simple loop. We'll loop over each of the items in the output dictionary, unpacking the raw and JSON output separately. And then I've got logic. If a command had a JSON output, we'll write that out. If it didn't, it'll just write the raw output. To actually create the files, we'll just use the, the very common open function that comes with Python, and we'll open these in a W mode for writing the files, and then simply just write out the raw output or the JSON output into those files that are being put into the folder that we created. When we run our script, we can see here that we look good, no errors were reported, and I can see the list of files that were created. But was there actual data in these files? Directly on NXOS on the switch, we can look at the boot flash and we can see our files are listed there in the report or in the folder that was uh, corresponds to this um, issue, this timestamp. And then we can just use the show file command directly inside of NXOS to look at the, the contents of these files. And sure enough, we can see that I've got both the clear text under the green highlight, as well as the JSON output for the uh, show IP route command under the blue highlighted pieces that are there. So at this point, the first part of our process is done. I've got a Python script that'll gather all of the output necessary. I just need to use EEM to monitor for the event and then react to those syslog messages. Now, if you're not familiar with Embedded Event Manager, this is a piece of old school automation. It's been present in Cisco IOS, IOS XE, IOS XR, NXOS, basically all of the platforms for many years. And what it does is it gives you the ability to combine an event with an action. So on the event side, there are a whole series of things that EEM can look at. It can look at syslog messages. It can look at commands that are being run directly on the box. It can look at hardware changes. Maybe a fan tray or a line card has been inserted or removed. So any of those events can then trigger different actions. An action could be executing CLI, generating a new log message, maybe creating a custom SNMP trap. And when we combine these together, those go into that EEM applet. For our use case, we're gonna focus in on a syslog message to execute a piece of C, uh, CLI. Now, what syslog message do we wanna look for? We need a string match so that will match the interface going down or up. And so here we just kind of cause that to happen manually and then look at the log messages that are generated and we can see some pretty specific matches that we can look for. Our interface Ethernet 111 going down or coming back up. With that under, uh, understood, now we can actually go ahead and configure the EEM applet for what we're after. So we're creating two applets here. The first one, it will happen whenever the syslog pattern of Ethernet 111 is down is seen. And then a second one for the syslog pattern for it going up. And in both cases, the action we'll run will be a CLI action to run that Python script that we put in. Now in the examples here, I have a single action for each event, but EEM would support running multiple actions. So maybe if I had a case where I wanted to run the Python script and then maybe run another Python script to maybe email a report or generate a, a WebEx Teams or a Slack message, you can have multiple events or multiple actions for each one of the events that happen. We can kind of test that our action is running correctly here by going into our interface and then shutting it down. The command show event manager events action log will actually show you the history of that event and any other event that's been configured. And sure enough, we can see that we did have our event be uh, trigger and it ran our Python script. What's interesting here is if we look at the timestamp for the event and then the timestamp embedded inside of our folder name, we can see that there's a 14 second difference. And that's because inside of our Python code, we're not actually creating the folder name until after all the commands have been run. So an enhancement could be to actually create that folder name at the start of the script so that the time's lined up. And it'd be up to you to determine if that 14 seconds really mattered to Carl or not when you went to go hand in this project. So at this point, we've gone ahead and we've got our script, we've got our EM applet, so it's doing all of that monitoring for us. But Alana needs to have those files herself so that she can submit them back into Carl. So how can we pull them off our switch? 
Well, if we look at our device, we've got all of our, um, our reports are in a very specifically formatted folder name structure, TS underscore report underscore, and then a timestamp. And so we can use SCP once again, not just to copy files to our switches, but to pull files off of our switches. And so here with a simple wildcard uh, match, I can pull down all of the events all at once uh, at the end of the day, or maybe at a lunch break to be ready to submit these back in as part of my report. When I run that command, we can see here that I've gotten two different events, two different folders, and each of the files have been downloaded onto my laptop. Now that they're on my laptop, I don't have to be restricted just to the show file command inside of NXOS. I can open these files up and then start manipulating them using the tools on my laptop. I'm a fan of VS Code. VS Code has some really good formatters. So I can take that raw JSON file and then quickly format it into something that's more easily readable, as you can see in the, 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 on the screen here. Or we can just simply look at the output of the raw commands captured for each one of the interfaces that went through. And that's it. Alana has been able to take that typical, very boring type of use case that a junior engineer might be assigned to assist with some critical troubleshooting task automate it and be able to kick back and make Carl and everybody else happy through the automation. Now, a few considerations on this specific use case. Now we tackled this with EEM plus Python, but that is clearly not the only way this could have been done. In any automation or any use case that you're, you're faced with, there's probably more than one way that you could accomplish that task. I generally recommend pick the way that uh, you know how to work. Maybe it's a, a common pattern you've used before. There's no reason to reinvent a new approach for every single use case that you're faced with. Now, it's also important to balance reusable code versus hard-coded elements. In this use case, we had the event ID as an argument to the script, but it was hard-coded into the EEM applet. That was a nice balance. And the command list was hard-coded into the script, so if we ever have to add additional commands, we'd have to edit the script. Again, it's a balance of what to make configurable, what to make uh, kind of baked into this, the use case. Now the deploying of the EEM applet itself could easily be automated using a tool like Ansible, PyATS, or even the model-driven programmability uh, protocols of NetConf or RESTConf. If I only have to monitor a single device, I'm probably gonna manually deploy the EEM applet. But if I had to do this across a dozen different switches in my data center, I would definitely take the time to build some automation to deploy and manage those EEM applets. Now this use case could be used uh, on platforms other than NXOS, but you might have to make a few minor changes to the Python script or the EEM applet, depending on platform specific um, elements of the, the, the technologies in use. The documentation available for each one of the platforms can give you those details. Now, if you want to dive deeper into this uh, use case, I've got a few resources aligned here to our web our webinar today. The code for this use case is available up on GitHub and DevNet's Code Exchange, and you can run this use case on the same sandbox I used when I built it, which was specifically the Cisco NS NSO Reservable Sandbox. Now, I did a longer version of this use case dive where we walked through the code a little bit more in more depth, looked at all the steps that were in place, and it's part of the DevNet Associate Prep Program which includes this walkthrough as well as several other use cases that you can look at. If you happen to be studying for your DevNet associate, I've linked here to the exam topics list, as well as the guides for EEM in the Python API guide. And with that, I'm all done. Thank you so much for joining me today at DevNet Create, and I look forward to seeing you all soon.